Hello Interwebs, welcome to Let's Build Computers. Today I'm taking a look at the GameMax Iceberg 120ml water cooler. This has been generously supplied to me by GameMax as part of my GameMax demo PC build that I'm working on at the moment. And it should be a perfect replacement for the AMD Wraith cooler that is currently on my 3600. So we're going to be taking a look around this cooler and how to fit it to both AMD and Intel sockets. So let's dig in. So the supplied fan is the GameMax FN12 Rainbow N. Uh, so this is a three pin RGB fan and the ring around the outside of the frame here, this is full uh, individually addressable LED illumination. And that ring is also visible down the sides of the frame as well. And you get a nice sharp crisp line of color, which really looks fantastic, whether you're using it with a GameMax case or any other type of case as well. Um, the fan itself, despite being a three pin rather than a PWM fan, it's very quiet through normal operation. And for general usage, this entire cooling system gives a really nice quiet operation under both idle and load conditions. So the fan works out really nicely. Coming out the side, we've got two wires, both of which are nicely braided, going to a three pin fan header cable and a four pin digital RGB header that can be plugged into the GameMax Aurora sync system or to probably quite a few other digital RGB systems as well. So this allows you to link it up to your existing RGB setup without having to have a dedicated controller. The radiator is a lightweight 120 millimeter package that will quite easily mount at either the top of the case or the back of the case with flexible hoses that lead into the main pump head itself which as I mentioned has mounting for both Intel and AMD systems. This guy also connects to a three pin fan header for its power and the GameMax logo in the center lights up green when during operation. On the bottom we've got solid copper base with just a little bit of roughness to allow the thermal paste to bite into the block because sometimes having things being too smooth can actually make the thermal paste do weird things where it'll start moving about a little bit if the computer is moved or if anything flexes. So sometimes just a little bit of roughness actually help thing, helps things out in the real world. For a quick test setup, I've got an old Intel system here and I'll show you how to set up the iceberg to fit to an Intel board. So for your Intel mount, you're gonna need the supplied backplate that comes with the system here. Uh, this guy has adjustable arms on the outside to fit whatever Intel socket you have. So adjust these arms to wherever they need to be for your particular socket and position this at the back of your motherboard. Our pump head requires the Intel brackets, which are these long boys here. And these will bolt onto the wings at the top and bottom of the pump. These lay down over the top and screw in from underneath. Make sure you refer to the manual for which screws to use in which places, but you'll find the instructions are quite clear, so it's a lot easier than it looks, this system. Now our Intel brackets are fitted, we're ready to put it onto the CPU. Normally I'd recommend having your motherboard already fitted up inside the case before fitting a water cooler. However, since this is just a demonstration board, we're just gonna fit it on the bench. However, in a moment when I show you the AMD fittings, you can see me do it on a computer that is already built up. Make sure you've got the long stepped M3 screws at the ready. Apply some thermal paste to the top of your CPU and then hold down the pump head on top of the chip. And then with your other hand, just drop in a couple of screws on opposite sides. And once you've got those located, you can now let go with your hand and you can easily put in the remaining screws. And tighten everything down to the stops. You don't need to grunge these screws really tight 
the flex in the black metal arms will provide the hold down force for the cooler. All you have to do is turn the screws until they hit the stops and that's it. Then if your motherboard has dual CPU fan headers, connect the pump to the secondary fan connector. If you only have one CPU fan header like this board here, then connect up the pump to one of the chassis fan connectors such as this one up here or this one over here. Your chassis fan connector might also be in the top left of the board over here as well. However, for me, I'm going to remove this and fit it into my AMD build now. So let's change things around. So I'm gonna fit my water cooler into my GameMax Kamikaze Pro build here, which as you can see, currently has an AMD Wraith Stealth cooler on it. And the Wraith Stealth cooler, it's not too shabby as far as stock coolers go. However, this guy will spin up to 2700 RPM under load, and it can get a little bit noisy. And under medium loads, it has a nasty habit of shifting its fan speed a lot, which can be come out as a very audible revving noise, as it were. You can hear the fan ramping up and down constantly under medium loads, which can be very distracting, I find, when you're just sitting at your desk working. So we're gonna take this guy out, and I'm going to relocate my rear fan from the back of the case up to the top, so I can retain my RGB fan and add in the additional RGB fan of the iceberg cooler as well. So let's remove this fan and this fan and then we'll get to fitting. Next, I'll clean the old thermal paste from my CPU so I can apply some fresh thermal paste for the best performance. The Game Max Iceberg utilizes the stock AMD retention brackets, which the Wraith Stealth and Wraith Spire coolers don't use. So I'm gonna refit my retention brackets onto my motherboard now. Before I put this all into the case, I'm gonna bolt my fan on first. This is a lot easier to do now than it is once it's already in the case. I'm setting mine up to be an exhaust fan. So I'm gonna have the fan blowing toward the front of the radiator and then exhausting out the back of the case, which is a standard setup that will work for more or less all instances. And the AMD mounts, these go on just the same way as the Intel ones do. So the bracket goes onto the top of the pump mounts and screws in from underneath. I'll just loose fit that while I get all the screws located. And now I also need the silver brackets and the large thumb screws. And you want to leave these as loose as you can manage for now. And that way, it means that you don't have to try and put these on while you're holding the pump head in place. And now our whole setup is ready to go in. We'll put some new thermal paste on the CPU. And now I'm just going to rest the pump on the far side of the case while I position the radiator. and I'll use these four case screws that come in the kit to mount the radiator to the back of the case. Now we've got to move the pump head around into position 
and hold it down on top of the CPU while I align those two clips over the retention bracket. So I've got my left hand done. Now I just need to lift and align the right. And once I can see that these clips are all engaged, I'll turn the thumb screw to tighten it all up. And the other side. And now we can just take those down to the stops. Once again, as you can see, these arms will bend and that provides the spring force that applies pressure onto the top of the CPU. So no need to grunge these tight, just turn them until they stop turning. Now the cooler is all fitted into the case, we can do a little bit of housekeeping and some plumbing with the wires. So firstly, I'll just move these wires out of the way so I can remount my top case fan again. To keep these fan cables tidy, I'm first going to feed them all out the top corner of my case, up in the top left here. And that will allow me to tidy the excess wires around the back of the case where they're nice and hidden. Next, the radiator fan I'm going to connect up to my CPU fan header so my motherboard can control the speed of this fan as it reacts to the CPU temperature. And the pump I'll connect up to the system fan header, which is conveniently hidden in the top left of my motherboard where you can't see it. And now around the back of the case, we'll just tie these cables back. So my fan cable will just fold that guy up. And I'll zip tie him to this tie down on the case. And then finally, my RGB header cable, I'm gonna connect up to the Aurora hub I've got on my Kamikaze Pro case here. And this will make sure that my, my water cooling fan is perfectly synced with all my other case fans as well. And now we can close it all up and turn it all on. And now we've got a lovely clean setup that matches the aesthetic of my case. And that 120 millimeter fan will give me not only more cooling capacity, but also quieter performance than the stock AMD blower. And under an extreme CPU stress test scenario, we can see a 15 degree drop in temperatures. And these are on default fan curves without even spinning up the fan to high speeds. Thank you very much for watching everyone. And thank you to Gamax for supplying me with the Iceberg 120 mil cooler. I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.